Hi, and welcome to No Budget, the show that's for filmmakers with no budget by filmmakers with no budget. I am talking to Tony Kelly this month. He is a stand-up comedian, uh, actor, international man of extraordinaire, and he recently won the Dublin Web Fest for the web series The Hurler, and I think you won a couple other awards for that too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we've won a couple of awards over the years, but the, the most recent one will be at Dublin Web Fest. Yeah, we won the Best Irish Series and we won the Audience Award as well. That's great. Yeah. Um, for anyone watching that hasn't seen it, what uh, describe The Hurler to us. Uh, well, when I'm pitching it, I always pitch it as Eastbound and Down Meets The Office. So it's, um, it's a mockumentary about uh, Ireland's most famous hurler, Gar Campion, who is um, a kind of, kind of confused individual. He's a fashionista, but also a very tough son of a bitch on the pitch. I'm Gar Campion, and I am the greatest hurler in the world of Ireland. Uh, he's, uh, in the first season, the story is that we, we join him as a documentary crew, and they're supposed to be following his path to the All-Ireland Final, but he gets suspended for punching an elderly official at the very start of the series, so it actually documents his fall from grace outside of, of hurling. Because I was always really um, amazed by these, these guys who are the top hurlers in the country, that they, they basically train as a professional, perform as a professional, are treated as a professional, but have to work a nine to five job as well. Mm -hmm. So how you can play in front of 83,000 people in Croke Park and the whole country on TV, and then have to go to work the next day and just sit amongst the plebs was something that really, I don't know how your ego can handle that. Oh, I know, like, um, for anyone watching, like, from our US audience, the hurling is the greatest sport known to mankind, in my yeah. opinion, I love it. Uh, and it's it's kind of a cross between uh, field hockey meets... Lacrosse. Lacrosse, probably. Meets ice hockey, without any pads. Yeah, with, yeah no padding, yeah. like, you know, the, if they get hurt, they just get up and keep playing. Yeah. You, and. And anyway, so the players more or less have real regular daytime jobs. So they might be, you know, an accountant or whatever yeah. it is they do during the day, but then go to hurling uh, practice and, you know, play in big stadiums on the weekend. Yeah, like, for example, Gar in the show is a contract cleaner. He mm -hmm. cleans pubs and, and that kind of thing. All right. Okay, let's take a break and watch a preview of The Hurler for sure. season two. That was a preview of The Hurler. That's uh, the second season preview on there. Uh, it's all on YouTube. Uh, go watch it. Uh, I been binge watched it today. Wow. Um, so uh, so it's uh, yeah, it's hilarious stuff. Thank you. And, well, and especially just because I love hurling uh, anyway. And okay. so uh, to to kind of watch this, uh, I I kind of view him as kind of a clueless character. Well, yeah, he yeah, absolutely know, like, is. Uh, um, and he. Yeah, I, well, I think what it is, and I, like I don't not necessarily think that he's clueless, but he definitely is living a facade. And mm -hmm. is struggling with that, and that's—I yeah. think—that's the best way to kind of, without revealing too much, about his psyche. That's the best way to approach it, I think. How do you source your uh, cast and crew? Did the cast and crew change much from one season? Oh, to it's it's, and... it's a completely different thing. So in, in the first one, we literally had no budget, which is great because that's what this show is called. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we did not spend one euro on making the first. When I say we, well, myself and Stephen Kelly in the first one, um, and we basically got a lot of local actors from Waterford or people I knew from around the country to come in and just kind of day play on it. Yeah. Um, a lot of the stuff was written in, in, in a script and then we'd improvise a take and then we'd take whatever was the best from it. And it was very much kind of guerrilla film filmmaking really. We did it very fast. Mm -hmm. Pardon me, I didn't have much chance to do rewrites on scripts and stuff like that. We just got it out there. And then in the second one, we had some investment in it to get me to New York and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, that was all professional actors that are friends of mine in New York, or professional comedians uh, who I know from the stand-up scene who also wanted to be in it as well. Nice. Uh, with, with shooting it, did the equipment change? Because I, I feel mm. like the, the, the quality of the show looks better and sounds better in the second season Purposely, well. obviously, um, in the first season, again, it was shot in 2013 originally, which is a good few years ago now. And uh, yeah, the equipment was much more basic. We had no boom, we just did it on some radio mics. Um, I don't even know, I know we shot it on tapes the first time, it wasn't even digitally shot. 
except for the uh, the very final episode of season one was shot on um, on five D. I think it was shot on. But the second season was shot on all professional equipment. I think we shot it on Black Magic. I'm not a hundred percent sure because I'm not a very technical mm -hmm. guy. So how how did you budget the second season? Was it just from like ad revenue from the first season, yeah. or okay? Well, really, it goes back to meeting people at LA Web Fest. Uh, the year we were nominated and won some awards there, and uh, a guy from Korea told me that the way to to do it is to monetize the show if it's any way successful at all originally. Which thankfully, the hurler was quite successful yeah. uh, in the first season. Um, and then people wanted to kind of get involved with product placement. So I wore a GA jersey that we, we mocked up. Um, and um, a guy I know whose business, we put his sponsor on the front of the jersey as if it was a jersey who we like was sponsored anyway. And uh, yeah, it was a nice way to, nice. to, to do it, you know. It's just, it just again, it was just an experimental thing. It wasn't a whole whole lot of money and it was just, it wasn't to make money, but it was just to, to fund, me cost, yeah. fund me getting to America, really, to be honest, more so than anything else, nice. because I was I was living here at the time. Are you planning to do uh, season three or uh, anything uh, coming up that you want to talk about? Uh, I, well, I, I am planning to do something, but I don't want to talk about okay. it. You know I mean? no but the, the, I will just say that the web series part of The Hurler is probably done. Mm -hmm to be honest, um, but I would say watch this space as to what's coming okay. next with it. Perfect, that's great. Yeah. Uh, you also are acting in film as well, not just a YouTube series. Yeah. So uh, what are you working on film-wise? Um, at the moment, I'm literally in the middle of uh, filming a new feature film mm -hmm. called Writing Home. It's an absolutely, it's gonna be a fantastic film. I, I'm not just saying that because I'm in it, but it's, it's my first time playing the lead in a feature. I've, I've been the bad guy before and I've done bit parts before and all that kind of stuff. But what's funny about it, and to tie it all in, is that I got it because of the horror, to be honest. Okay. Which you know, so people are like web series is becoming a, a huge, a huge thing it right is, now. Yeah. Uh, like when I did the horror, it was two thousand and thirteen, and when I was pitching to people, people were saying, "What's a web series?" Because in Ireland, people hadn't done them before. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I was the first one to ever do one, but certainly one of the first. Um, but it has led to me getting this lead role in a feature film. Great. Um, from what I understand, the the executive producer Alan Fitzpatrick read the script. And he said, this character is so unlikable at the start that the only person I could see actually doing this and making it work is Tony Kelly, because I've seen The Hurler. That's great. Because te if, if you've seen it, you'll know that you really shouldn't like Gar Campion, but for some reason we do. Yeah. I, I don't know why that is. Um, I think it's what we said earlier, that he's, he's clueless slash living a facade that he's kind of in on as well, and, doesn't, and the frustration of him not being able to live mm -hmm. truthfully. It's funny, I guess, and, and we can kind of all, I think, empathise with that. Mm -hmm. And the character I play in, in Writing Home is, is quite similar to that, um, except he's an author. He's a, a very successful writer, has written uh, multi-bestsellers mm -hmm. and stuff, and has to come home to his, uh, to his um, hometown in a small village in Ireland. And it's kind of the juxtaposition of living in London and being famous and having all these sycophants around you and... Mm -hmm. Ha catering to every need and then going home and people don't treat you like that at home you know yeah. what I mean mm -hmm. so it's it's, it's back at home you're still just you're yourself still, yeah. exactly uh -huh. and that's 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 the kind of basis uh -huh. for the film oh, that's great um, and it goes to show how doing other stuff pays off right I mean you did the first season the hurler just you know you had an idea you wanted to do a series yeah. and stuff not necessarily I get the impression not necessarily to make money but just kind of get out there yeah and then it leads to this so I think it it shows the, the steps that that can lead to. I, I had come, absolutely, I'd come back from living in the States and Canada for years, I'd been doing the stand-up thing, I'd done a couple of smaller movies and um, I just literally rapped on a movie in Canada. And then I came home here and there was nothing happening and it was either, you know, give up after being at it for so many years or do something myself and I, I did The Hurler, you know, people couldn't, at the, at the start, didn't understand what that, but I could see the bigger picture and I wanted to see people to see what I could do outside of being a stand-up comedian because you don't want to be tired with that brush all the time. Because yeah. Well, if, you're, if that's what you are, that's what you are, but mm -hmm. I'd like to think I'm a lot more than that and uh, the horror allowed me to show that and now, thankfully, years later, yeah. and that's a big point, years later, it's starting to finally come to fruition. Yeah, and that's, I think, great advice is you, you kind of got to stick to stuff sometimes. 100%. Uh, that, uh, you know, I said this the other night, uh, I was at a media con and I was talking to some industry people and uh, they were commenting on that as well and mm -hmm. saying how, how long I've stuck it out and you know, because I, I knew you know, if I did that, that it would be great. And uh, there's a famous quote that I was told when I broke into stand up first that it's, it, it's by Dee Schneider who's the lead singer of Twisted Sister. Mm -hmm. He said, it's very easy to be an overnight success. All it takes is 10 years of hard work. <laughs> nice. And that's what I live by. I that's think. good advice. Mm. Uh, okay, last question. Where can uh, people find you if they want to track you down? 
Uh, well, I'm on, uh, I mostly use Instagram. It's my, it's the thing, uh, my social network of choice. I'm on Twitter as well. It's at I am Tony Kelly. Or you can get, um, you can basically get me anywhere on that. Okay. Uh, the Hurler is on YouTube. Just put The Hurler into YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you can pretty, pretty much find me from anywhere on that. Perfect. All right. Great. Cheers. Well, thanks for coming down and chatting with us. Mm. And it was nice talking to Thank you. Thank you for having me, Willow. All right, thanks. And with that, we're going to draw the show to a close. And we will see you next time around.